Off-world colonies might become a reality sooner than you think. Some innovations uh, currently in active development are portable nuclear reactors, 3D printed habitats, and compact micro farms. Today, we dive into how these ventures will not only pave our way to the stars, but will create a better life right here on planet Earth. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host, Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you like today's episode or want to ask me something, please leave your comments below. Your feedback helps us out a great deal. Also, we're now on Rumble. We have a link in the description below. Even in the early 21st century, there's a debate as to whether or not we should continue to explore space. Many cite, as they did in the past, that there are too many issues here on Earth that need to be addressed. While that statement is accurate, it's worth noting that it's not a zero-sum game. The United States of the 1960s was certainly not without its problems, yet in spite of those issues, we were able to tackle them head-on while putting a man on the moon. Had we not accomplished JFK's vision of putting a man on the moon by the end of that decade, we would not be blessed by the technological advancements that led to the high-tech economy we have today. Personal computers, satellite communications, and various medical advances were a product of technological pursuits made to advance human spaceflight. Now, over five decades have passed, and private industry is looking to turn the page on the next chapter of human exploration. The goal is to make humanity multiplanetary by building rockets that will allow us to go to Mars while developing other technologies that will make the human colonization of the Red Planet sustainable. To do this, you need the following. Access to power access to shelter, sustainable water and food production, and advances in life support technology. Of those, the one that needs to be immediately addressed is power. Power is everything, especially on the red planet. Without it, you can't make fuel, you can't grow crops, and you certainly cannot run your life support systems needed to keep future populations alive. We stated in our Mars colonization episode last year that NASA requires a minimum of 40 kilowatts of power capacity to keep a crew alive on Mars, but this is just a crew of four to six astronauts, not a colony of hundreds or even thousands of people. We need a lot more capacity in the coming decades if we're gonna make Musk's dream a reality. Thankfully, not only is SpaceX and its team of talented engineers aware of the issue, but they've actually done a fair bit of research into portable nuclear power. And while conducting their work, some of them felt that the reactor they were developing, while very useful on Mars, could have even greater applications right here on Earth. Doug Brenner, a former SpaceX employee, left the company with some of his colleagues to start a new company called Radiant. The goal is to make small micro-reactors that can be shipped and installed anywhere for on-demand power. In an interview given by MarketWatch, the founder had this to say, I worked at SpaceX for 12 years, working on a wide variety of research and development projects. I joined SpaceX to help with the mission of colonizing space, which I still believe is one of the noblest causes worthy of dedicating a life's work. During the course of my time at SpaceX, I came to understand that you can only effectively turn Mars into a frontier with nuclear power. I began to study nuclear technology and found that portable nuclear generators could actually be a climate-friendly, cost-effective replacement for diesel generators on Earth. Portable generators can power remote islands and villages and can provide backup power for life-saving applications like in hospitals or disaster relief scenarios. Portable reactors could revolutionize the nuclear industry. He's not wrong, and the company has managed to raise over $3 million in funding, which is impressive considering the company was founded less than a year ago. Their goal is to develop a 1.2 megawatt commercial reactor with the ability to power a thousand homes. With the ability to fit inside of a shipping container and be placed anywhere on Earth, it utilizes a helium-cooled, triso-fueled core, which can operate without refueling for five years. After the core is spent, the reactor can be shipped back to the factory, where the core is replaced, ready to be used again. The company has gained a great deal of support from the U.S. Department of Energy and the Department of Defense. In five years, they plan to have their first fueled prototype, with commercialization expected to follow just two years later. The CEO expects that within 10 years, the company will have as many as 25 reactors built and operating throughout the country, with more on the way. While this timeline is certainly ambitious, the people behind it are used to solving big problems quickly. But it also addresses a bigger point. Whether or not SpaceX's Mars colonization efforts are successful, the solution to the issue of powering a Mars colony will have long-term benefits here on Earth if the team at Radiant has its way. 
So that addresses Mars power concern. What do we do about shelter? A Texas-based company called Icon has been in the news recently amid recent advancements they have made into 3D printed construction. Using 3D printer robots and a specialized material called Lavacrete, they have already made affordable housing as well as the first 3D printed community in Mexico. However, their ambitions do not end on this planet. They have been contracted by NASA to build the world's first 3D printed Mars habitat, located in a hangar at the Johnson Space Center. Mars Dune Alpha is a 1,700 square foot 3D printed home complete with individual crew quarters, a lab, as well as vaulted ceilings to aid in the psychological well-being of the future inhabitants. NASA is currently looking to recruit volunteers to live in the habitat in isolation for one year, starting in the fall of 2022. In that time, they will conduct a realistic analog study of how astronauts will live and work on the Red Planet, study the long-term health and psychological effects of prolonged isolation, and see what improvements, if any, can be made to the habitat before we start building bases on Mars. The benefits of using a 3D printer on Mars cannot be overstated. The amount of material and money required to ship similar size habitats to Mars from Earth would be ridiculous. Whereas sending a 3D printer to make the required infrastructure utilizing in situ resources is far more cost effective. So our future Mars colony will have reliable nuclear power and spacious housing for those who wish to stay. But what will our future colonists eat while they're there? Elon Musk's brother, Kimball, started a company a few years back called Square Roots. The goal was to radically improve agriculture by delivering modified shipping containers to make locally grown produce. Fresh fruits and veggies are grown under controlled conditions without the need for pesticides or GMOs. They already have a couple of agriculture campuses here in the United States. One is in Brooklyn, New York, which provides fresh produce to local grocery stores. The other is located at the headquarters for Gordon Food Services in Grand Rapids, Michigan. In the near future, Square Roots looks to build these micro farms near distribution centers across the country in an effort to provide healthier food options to consumers. On Mars, a micro farm can be delivered using the SpaceX Starship, dropped off near the base, and start operations almost immediately. The water required to grow the food would be harvested by melting Martian ice or by finding underground reservoirs located near thermal vents. If such thermal upwellings could be found, they could provide geothermal energy as well. So clearly the crew is not going to starve on Mars. They won't go thirsty, and they will be able to live comfortably in a 3D printed habitat supplied by nuclear power. But what about life support? The colonists got to breathe, right? Thankfully, someone solved that problem several decades ago and has since made a lot of money from it. K.R. Siddhar, the former professor of aerospace and mechanical engineering, as well as the director of the Space Technologies Laboratory at the University of Arizona, was tasked by NASA to solve a problem. How does one go about making oxygen on Mars? He went on to build a device that would use an ionic conductor to extract CO2 from the Martian atmosphere and turn it into oxygen and carbon monoxide. The device was planned to be used on the Mars 2001 Surveyor Lander. Unfortunately, the lander was canceled by NASA before the technology had its opportunity to shine. However, this did not discourage KR. A year later, he started reverse engineering his work. Upon completion, he developed a solid oxide fuel cell that could convert natural gas and biogas from nearby landfills into electricity. With this breakthrough, he started a company called Bloom Energy. Their product was a portable fuel cell called an energy server. They raised over a billion dollars in venture funding before eventually going public in 2018 and currently have 600 megawatts of installed capacity. Their clients include Google, eBay, Walmart, FedEx, and Adobe Systems, who use the technology to power their corporate campuses and data centers to offset carbon emissions. So, long story short, regardless of what challenges come up, give humanity a chance and they will solve our biggest problems. The surprise isn't that we can solve issues related to human spaceflight or long duration settlement of new worlds, but in so doing, we can use those solutions to benefit humanity as a whole. These new innovations will spark new industries, and those new industries will create opportunities, not just to attain wealth, but improve the human condition as a whole. And keep in mind, this is just what we can expect from just going to Mars, our next door neighbor in the solar system. Imagine what happens if we go even further, maybe exploring moons like Callisto or Titan, or even traveling to our neighboring star system. But that's a topic for another episode. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic.